Hey everybody, welcome back to Thursdays with Culture Talk. It's Teresa and Cynthia here again, talking hey. archetypes, right? We've been talking about these 12 patterns that we measure at Culture Talk. And we've been often focused on the patterns that score highest for us. We talk about this profile and the, um, the top scores are usually what we're referencing. But today we're gonna to go in the other direction and we're gonna focus on our lower scores. In fact, there's one kind of all the way at the bottom that we might refer to as your latent archetype. And that's one that we often try to avoid. As a matter of fact, we might sort of subconsciously be kicking it to the curb. And, um, you know, I often think about, you know, what does it feel like when that archetype pattern shows up? I mean, I might go like this then, you know, like, uh-uh, no way. Yeah. I kind of see it coming. And yeah. it's, it's because- I think you tend to notice too, you tend to notice the shadow of that pattern when you see it in somebody else. Yeah, right. When you see it, you, you're kind of like, oh God, here, here it comes again. You know, right. so it's all like, for me, it's always like a body sensation, right? Like, oh, it's like a cringe or my hand goes up. Like, you know, you kind of know here it comes and I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable with that pattern. So it's a real opportunity to really understand where might we have some biases and, you know, is it the other person or is it really just my reaction? Um, and how can I understand like what archetype patterns trigger me in that way? So I'll give you an example for me. I'll kind of lay it out there. Um, <laughs> one pattern that really triggers me sometimes is the sage. Mm -hmm. And that's because um, someone who's really activating that sage archetype is slowing things down, looking at the details, doing research um, and asking questions and trying to lay everything out. And that can be really challenging when I'm ready to move fast um, you know, I, I do care about that, but I don't want to be the one that has to take care of it, if you will. And it's, it sometimes feels really challenging when those types of, you know, requests to slow down come up. So um, this week that came up for me around some tax issues and having to find out, you know, the details of a business tax issue. And yes, I know you have to get it right. And it's really important but boy, does that irritate me. And when the issue came up that I should go research it, um, that didn't make me very happy either. So that <laughs> sage archetype can be really challenging for me. How about you? Well, I like, um, I like how you talk about you might actively reject them or sometimes like that pattern if you don't have easy access to it. So it's outside of your go-to patterns in that latent area. I think sometimes you're just perplexed when um, someone shows up in that pattern. So I'll use the example of um, every person. I love the idea of the every person archetype as an inclusive, as, as a, an archetype that looks for equality and, and leveling the playing field. But some of the shadow aspect of every person can turn into sounding like a broken record, sounding like a complainer, sounding like someone that's always pointing out what's not working. And that, like to me, I'm just perplexed by that shadow content because it just seems like it doesn't change things. It, complaining about things and not taking action doesn't change things. So I think it can be active rejection. It can be just being perplexed. Um, so every person would be one for me. Another one that I score not as high on, it's not my lowest, is the explorer, where again, I have a high attraction to explore. I wish, I, I'm almost jealous. I love the freedom of explore. I love the, you know, spontaneity of explore that wants to just get up and go, change of scenery. Um, my husband has that pattern in spades. Um, but, but what I reject about that pattern and what kind of gets on my nerves is lack of commitment, lack of follow through feeling like, you know, I don't know, I guess it's the commitment piece that that's an irritant for me. So two examples of scores that are lower for me, where I can see how they trigger, um, trigger me in my latent patterns. 
Yeah, so always more opportunity for growth, right? Even in looking at the low scoring patterns, um, we can find ways that, you know, we can coach to better understanding, um, better ownership of what's going on for us and how it shows up in relationships and, um, and you know, how we might need to work to move past some of the trouble spots, if you will, and those unconscious biases that show up for each of us. Yeah, so. totally. The, the area of growth is what can I do now that I recognize I'm the one being triggered how can I grow to appreciate some of the aspects of that pattern that we need? Yep. So that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you again soon. Have a great week.